Today, Ether drops back below $1,600 amid a wide crypto market slump. And ahead of testimony from Caroline Ellison, Nick Day of Coindesk walks us through the latest in the trial of Sam Bankman fried Welcome to CNBC's Crypto World, I'm Jordan Smith. Crypto prices moving lower to kick off the week, with Bitcoin sliding more than 1.5%, Ether dropping more than 2.8% below $1,600, and Solana falling more than 5.5%. Now, the crypto market was higher over the weekend, but stumbled following the attack by Hamas on Israel. Okay, let's get you caught up on the latest headlines. First, a report from Bloomberg reveals CFTC commissioners are voting on potential enforcement actions against former Voyager CEO Stephen Ehrlich. According to the report, the regulators found that Ehrlich broke derivatives regulations before Voyager's bankruptcy, citing people familiar with the matter. Potential enforcement actions from the CFTC can include fines and non-criminal penalties if the agency accuses Ehrlich of misleading customers about the safety of their assets. We reached out to the CFTC but didn't hear back right away. In February, it was revealed that the FTC is also investigating Voyager, which went bankrupt in July of 2022. Next, we're preparing for week two in the trial of Sam Bankman fried Last week kicked off with testing testimony from an FTX customer, a former engineer, and Gary Wong, the company's co-founder who pleaded guilty to fraud charges last year and has been cooperating with prosecutors. After detailing for the court the special privileges FTX's sister hedge fund Alameda got from FTX and the final days of the exchange before its collapse, Wong faced cross-examination from the defense who tried to argue that Alameda's ability to rack up debt was necessary for its operation. Now, the court is observing Columbus Day today, but Wong is expected to be back on the stand tomorrow to finish his testimony. Then another key witness, Caroline Ellison, who was the head of Alameda, will take the stand. She, of course, was critical in the operation of the trading firm, and she pleaded guilty to federal charges last year, too. At the same time, prosecutors asked Judge Kaplan to keep the defense from mentioning Sam bankman frieds investment in Anthropic, an AI company that keeps raising funds and boosting the value of SBF's stake in the process. For background, last week, Bloomberg reported that Anthropic's ambitions to raise investments could potentially value the company at as much as $30 billion. Creditors took to X, formerly known as Twitter, to speculate if FTX's holdings in the company could help make creditors whole. Prosecutors argued to the judge that, quote, the indictment alleges that the defendant committed wire fraud by misappropriating FTX customer deposits to make investments and other expenditures. It is immaterial whether some of those investments might ultimately have been profitable. All right, for more on the trial, I spoke with Coindesk's managing editor for global policy and regulation, Nicolesh Day, who's been closely covering Sam bankman frieds trial at the courthouse. All right, so week one of the trial for Sam bankman fried is out of the way. We've we've already gotten to witness testimony from people like Gary Wong, and and we're all, we're talking on the show about uh, some of the biggest details that have come from that testimony, like the the bug in the code that was apparently allegedly um, given to Sam bankman fried He was warned about it ahead of time. Um, you're in the courtroom uh, after hearing some of this testimony. How effectively are prosecutors making their case that Sam bankman fried was aware of mismanaged funds on the platform? Hey, good morning. Yeah, so I would say the DOJ has so far been very deliberate about how they're presenting the case to try and l really lay everything at Sam bankman frieds feet. You know, they're saying that he directed uh, – you know, not just mismanagement of funds per se, but rather uh, he directed his employees to, you know, perhaps turn a blind eye to some of the, you know, malfeasance that they saw or the issues that they found. Uh, so, you know, you referenced the bug. Sam McQuid Fried, um, you know, told his employee allegedly that discovering that, you know, they had a multi billion dollar hole was not, you know, a huge issue. Uh, he told another, you know, employee, or he told his co-founder, rather, that you know they should allow Alameda Research, the sister company to FTX, to be able to go negative and to be able to, you know, tap this massive line of credit that allowed it to ultimately create that eight billion dollar hole. So the DOJ has really been trying to present all of this as, you know, something Sam Bankman Fried directed and did, as opposed to you know what the defense has been trying to say is. Uh, you know, just a series of unfortunate events that led to the situation last year. Yeah, I should mention that CoinDesk was the one to break the story that eventually led to the fall of FTX and SBF. And, and have there been any details that have come out in the testimony that we've gotten so far that have, have maybe surprised you or, or been more revelatory than that initial story that you guys um, originally put up? 
Yeah. So the original story, you know, of course, was really just saying, hey, there's something weird about the balance sheets here. Um, you know, at the time, I don't think we quite expected the full impact that we saw in court. You know, the kind of the timeline has come up a number of times during the opening and during, you know, really a testimony with FTX co-founder and former chief uh, technology officer, Gary Wong, uh, where they mentioned that, you know, this was a thing that happened. Um, they were very deliberate not to name Coindesk or uh, mention the specific circumstances. But, you know, one thing that kind of surprised me is the extent to which they said that, you know, this was really, um, you know, the company was fine right up until the panic happened. Um, I mean, obviously, I think that's the case with, you know, if you look at bank runs as a comparison, banks are fine until the runs begin. Uh, FTX was not a bank, but, you know, I think it's a similar, um, you know, comparison. But the fact that they really didn't uh, seem to have, a, you know, a plan or at least so far from the testimony that's emerged so far, they didn't seem to be addressing it, you know, really until everything collapsed, uh, despite acknowledging that they were aware of and, you know, examining the, uh, the massive, you know, deficit that Alameda had with FTX. Uh, that was, I think, a little bit surprising to me. Yeah, let's talk a little bit more about the defense that they're mounting here. I, I mean, you wrote an update for, you co-wrote an update for Coindesk on Friday saying that Sam Bankman frieds lawyers are sort of testing the judge's patience in the trial. Um, can you talk a little bit about how his defense is doing so far and whether the strategy that they've picked is working? This idea that uh, it really wasn't about mismanagement funds, it was really about a, a lack of risk management, and he's acknowledging that mistake. Ha has that resonated with the court at all? I think it's a bit too early to say, but so far, at least, the jury has been, uh, you know, presented with a defense where, um, you know, defense has not begun to present this case, but they have started cross-examining witnesses. And through multiple witnesses, you've seen the judge kind of, you know, audibly, visibly lose patience with the defense attorneys. And, you know, he's warned them in front of the jury. He's warned them outside the view of the jury to stop, you know, repeating questions, to not push the, you know, limits and the boundaries that they have. But the fact that we are starting to see some of these warnings come in front of the jury and the judge, you know, the way he said some of the, you know, things that he said, he's been exasperated. He sounded, uh, you know, like he was a little bit tired of having to repeat himself. Um, I can't imagine that's going to leave a you know, positive impression on the jury. You know, if you're a juror and you're seeing one attorney uh, get told repeatedly to stop, you know, using repetition, repetitive questions to stop, uh, you know, doing certain things. And I assume, you know, if I'm a juror, I would not be too familiar. These guys are looking at the judge to explain the law. That's probably not great for the defense so far. To your point, we're still early on in this this trial. Um, some of the evidence and some of the arguments are still being laid out and decided. And the one that you pointed to in your story on Sunday was um, the DOJ wants to prevent the defense from bringing up FTX's investment in Anthropic. That's the generative AI company that recently uh, scored a huge fundraise, which raised the value of FTX's stake. Uh, does that stake really matter here, regardless of whether customers will, customers will be made whole? I mean, if the argument here is, is that there was mismanagement. Does that defense work that the customers will potentially be made whole. And so therefore there's nothing wrong. Well, that's exactly the DOJ's argument is that it doesn't matter if customers are going to be made whole at all. Uh, the fact that, you know, there was this massive deficit that the a billion went missing to begin with is the issue. Uh, the defense is trying to argue, or rather I should say the defense wants to argue that, you know, FTX was always like a well-intentioned company that Bankman Freed was, you know, trying to do his best. And so if customers are being made whole, then that's a sign that, you know, he is, and in fact did uh, do his best to protect his customers. But the DOJ is, you know, as you mentioned, you know, that they're not really buying that. They want to say that, you know, he took these funds, he bought things with them that were, you know, these funds belong to customers and he bought his uh, you know, stake in Entropic, he bought houses, he bought other luxury goods. Um, and so that's still mismanagement, that's still fraud. Final question from me. We're expecting Gary Wong to finish testimony tomorrow. 
and then we'll have Caroline Ellison take the stand and arguably the biggest witness here. Um, what are your expectations from that testimony? And more broadly, is there anything else that we should look forward to in the week ahead? So for Carolyn Ellison in particular, um, obviously, as the former CEO of Alameda Research, she was in the driver's seat. Um, I, I think we're really looking forward to seeing what she is able to say about the circumstances by which Alameda, you know, took FTX customer funds, used them, how those funds were lost. You know, was it really, you know, for example, did the Terra Luna collapse last year really have such a dramatic impact on Alameda or were those funds already being, you know, dispersed and lost beforehand? Um, you know, similar to the other issues that Alameda had, um, you know, was she aware of the uh, coding that allowed Alameda to draw, you know, on such a big line of credit? I assume the answer is yes, but, um, you know, to what extent did she feel that that was a, you know, a cushion for her? All right, that's all for Crypto World today. We'll be back again tomorrow and we'll see you then.